Hi guys. Um, this is going to be setting up your plane and getting your shaving correct. And I can't emphasize enough how important this part is. It's so, so important and you must practice it a lot because <laughs> this will, it's the make it or break it. As in, what will it tell you? It will tell you whether your plane is correct. It will tell you whether this is flat, whether it's got a dome kind of here. Yeah, that's what this kind of doing this test or the shaving will tell you. Other things it will tell you, it will tell you whether your blade is sharp enough if you have ground it enough as well and this is kind of a standalone kind of video and also it's a, it, it's in the series of kind of tuning this kind of plane essentially um, the blade if you have kind of followed this kind of series this blade um, came with this plane and it was kind of okay on the back but not very good on this side. It was like really kind of domed over. I don't know what the person had done before. So I, like I said in a few other videos, I have got a surface grinding machine. I kind of surface ground this down and I ground down this side as well. I didn't quite want to go to the end to get rid of the kind of record and stuff here. So it's taken a bit of work to kind of get it to this stage. Clearly not everyone's got that, but if you see these kind of funny markings, kind of that's what it is. So setting up your playing. Clearly, you know, the flattening of this and that, I've already gone through all that, so clearly I'm not, you know, see those videos to kind of catch up for that bit. The blade, and it's been sharpened now. Now you're ready to kind of set it up in your plane. And I've got these other planes here because I will discuss those as well. Yeah, because they're, clearly if I set up this jack plane and you have a low angle plane, then they're completely two different ways of setting things up. So I'll go through this one and I'll go through a few of the others. I won't be too long winded about it. I'll kind of touch on some of the others, some of the pros and cons of different planes. With a jack plane like this, or it could be a smoothing plane, but essentially like this, where it has this frog here and it's at, it doesn't have to be 45 degrees, but that's this kind of setup. I'm not going to go through the anatomy of the plane, but uh, ish, a little bit to get it set up. This is called the chip breaker, kind of this part here. This bit clearly is not the blade, so the blade, the chip breaker, these two have to become one. So now you have spent time sharpening your blade, you don't want to damage it and you don't want to cut yourself. So how to kind of reassemble this, there is a screw in there, clearly there's a bigger slot here. There it goes on there, so there's the bevel side there, flip that over so the bevel is facing downwards. This one, there's all writing at this top and there's this kind of curve here that wants to be at the top. Go like across, like so. Get the screw to go through the hole, slide it down like this. Yeah, sometimes you have to undo the screw, but you don't want it to fall across. Then the most important thing is you don't go like this and spin it around and pull it black back over the edge of the blade. Again, it's one of these things that if you forget, you're gonna get punished for it. And what I mean by that is you're going to damage the blade and you're going to have to sharpen it again. That's why you're gonna get punished for it because you're gonna spend time fixing it. So don't, well, you learn by your mistakes sometimes and they're fine, that's what happens. Go down like a cross, slide it down so you're now well out of the way of the blade. See if this is a bit, it's under tension a tiny bit and that's normal because it's not just falling and that's quite helpful. Spin it around so it's then parallel of course and then slide this thing forward. That's why you need the screw in here to give it a little bit of tension so it grabs hold of it. Slide this forward. I'll show you in the other camera now. Slide this forward and be careful. You do not want to go over the top. I would kind of aim for, and then sometimes I hold onto it at the side and then give it a bit of a wiggle kind of forward. I'd aim for about a millimeter or so. You want to have a millimeter chip breaker then a millimeter gap where the blade, you know, the tip of the blade is, right. And then kind of flip it over and then use, I tend to, when you can use a screwdriver, I tend to use my, my back of my hammer, but tighten this up, yeah. And it wants to be, just double check. You don't need to move anything around and then do this nice and tight, right, really tight, you know, and use a, a proper screwdriver for this. You don't want to use like a really small screwdriver. I intend to use my, my, end my hammer I've kind of ground this down so that fits in that slot perfectly but I'm used to using wooden planes loads and you need this a lot to undo the kind of screw so that's a perfect fit in there so I can do that up nice and tight you do not want this slipping over the top of the blade so that's that part now it's kind of putting it into the plane okay so of course you're having it like so then things you've got to watch out for is that 
Now that the chip breaker is in here, this little there's a slot kind of here, which is for this guy to go into. That's what makes the plane go forwards, forwards and backwards, yeah, with adjusting the, adjusting the handle. This bit here, this lever pushes the blade from side to side, yeah, which we'll see in a minute what effect that has. And then, of course, the screw that's going to kind of hold on to the lever cap here, which puts pressure on your blade. Yeah, you'll see me kind of do all this. So clearly that's the hole that that needs to go through. And this all needs to kind of go into its correct, correct place. And if it doesn't, well, it's not going to lock down correctly. So protect the blade tip. Don't cut yourself. Yeah, so watch out for that. But also look at this. Rather than looking at all of this and getting distracted, looking here and bashing this into metal parts of your plane. You don't want to do that either. So look at the kind of tip of this. Make sure you guide that kind of down into there. You have sometimes have to tip this at a bit of an angle to get past the screw. Yeah, but keep looking at the blade and then put your finger down the bottom here to kind of hold it steady. And mine's already kind of gone through into that little slot. Yeah, so that's perfect. You want to see this, I call it like a little tooth. You want to see that that's gone into, into there, essentially. Then you know it's kind of pushed down and you could just double check by looking at the frog and the blade and see there's no gap. But I know that it's kind of fallen into place because it's gone into kind of there. Now, the lever cap. Well, of course, there's only one way that can go. This little part should be up when you're putting it into the plane. Yeah, put that up like so. And if you've already preset this then you don't have to mess around with that you shouldn't have to mess around with that maybe the first couple of goes you might have to but once it's kind of done to the correct amount of tension well that it's it's done then let's pull this no see that's not tight enough so if it's not tight enough back it up to kind of this setting yeah I'll do it sideways so you can see so push it up like this and then sometimes you can do this by hand, but sometimes it needs a screwdriver, but always with the tension taken off. Couple of turns. Let's see. No, it needs to be a bit tighter. Let's see. It's a bit stiff. Yeah, getting a medium tightness. A little bit tighter. Let's see. Right, and you want this to be fairly straight as well. Let's see. That feels pretty good. You don't want this to be like if the, the, what happens is if, if this is too loose, then this moves too easily side to side. And if this is too loose, then also that, that that's too easily moved as well. The blade going forwards and backwards is too easy. If this is too stiff, this one, if you have to go it's not about you being not strong enough. If you have to go oh, really snap that down, well then you'll barely be able to move this kind of left or right, yeah, depending on where it is, when you won't be able to move your blade forwards and backwards. So it's not that that should be super tight. It should be kind of medium kind of tightness, yeah. Then after that, you kind of turn your blade, your plane upside down like so, yeah. Just move around here so you can see me a bit clearer. And then after that, you'll then kind of, you need to look at that sometimes to know which way you're turning the, the screw thread in here. You need to kind of hold it down like so, and then kind of spin it so you can go, okay, I can see the, the blade, the gap between the mouth. The mouth is this bit on here, which is the gap between the front of the plane, which is that little kind of part there where the blade's gonna come through. That's called the mouth, that little opening there. So you need to look at which way it's moving and then kind of have a look and be, okay, now the, the blade is sticking out. And what I'll do is I'll show you a set of pictures. Yeah, I'll take some pictures separately so you can understand what I'm looking at because I clearly can't take pictures through my eyes. So I'll show you some pictures now so you'll be able to see kind of what it looks like or what I'm kind of looking at. Yeah, because it's again quite hard. I can't set it up at the same time. So you'll push the blade forward and you'll see this black line poking out. And what I mean, like you've got to get this flat. So if I had a kind of arrow going all the way along this plane, flat, that's shooting me kind of straight in the center of the eyes. If you look like this, this is incorrect and clearly looking like that is incorrect. It should be shooting an arrow like right in between your eyes and then have a look 
feel where the dial is or the kind of the handle here to adjust it forwards and backwards and then kind of move it around. You'd be like, okay, sometimes put a piece of paper kind of down here. This bench is not the best for photography and for videos, but it looks quite good, but it's not the best for these kind of lines in here. So I'm looking for this black line and then it's this little lever here. You want to, while looking at it, push this lever backwards and forwards. You'll understand which way to move it because there's only, it's a 50-50 chance, but you'll get used to it. It's one of those things. I call it like riding a bike, but you see what I mean. It's like you need to do this a few times to get used to it. There's not a hundred scenarios. There's only a few. And clearly this is always oh, either that way or that way. I just know if it's over this, this way, if the shadow or the black line is more on this side, I have to push this lever towards it. Yeah. But if you get it wrong, well, you'll know you get it wrong and you push it the other way. So I need to push that until it becomes parallel. Yeah, the black line is kind of parallel to this. And then of course, with it sticking out that far, mine at the moment is sticking out kind of a millimeter. That is too far. I need to back that off until that kind of disappears. All right, let's see. And I know this, so my kind of I have concerns about this blade that it had such a, like I did surface grind it, but it moved around as well. It was so thin that when you surface grind something that it depends on the steel that it warps sometimes when you're kind of surface grinding. So I think that this blade is going to be no good. It was, it was, yeah, it was so off before I kind of started it that I, I'm, I'll use it because I sharpened it and I flattened it and I, grind it and I sharpened it, but setting it in here and putting it under tension can move the blade. But I'll demonstrate it in a minute because I sharpened it absolutely fine. It was flat and all the rest of it, but because it's, it's thin and it's gonna bend in here that I'm concerned it won't work, but I have got a kind of backup blade. But like I said, in the, right in the beginning stages of this whole kind of series, that I did say you can buy replacement blades for this. So I would, I, when I bought, I have a you know, similar blade or plane to this, exactly the same, but different, that I bought a replacement blade for it. So, and it's also far superior steel as well. So in hindsight, I would probably would recommend getting a replacement blade for it because it's gonna be far superior. And like we said, this one might not work. So if it doesn't, it's fine. I'm going to set this one up in it, but I'll do that kind of separately. So, but I've got these ones to kind of set up just so you can demonstrate that like the shaving and how it works. But also you'll get to see why this one won't work. <laughs> so it will be helpful either way, hopefully. So, because I can just tell from the looking at it at where the shadows are that it's not where I want it to be. I can see a tiny bit here and a tiny bit there. And when I move it around, I can't get it in the middle. So I know this is gonna be no good to me. And I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's not that this is domed over. I'm pretty sure it's the blade, but we'll find out as this journey progresses and this kind of, you know, this series progresses. So I can kind of see that it's dark here, it's dark there, there's nothing quite in the middle there. But what you do, just to confirm it, is you push the blade up, wiggle around, and then go back down again. So it's a game of up, get the black line, adjust it, go back down. Yeah, that's the kind of game. And sometimes I describe it as kind of, this is the horizon, that's the blade is the sun coming up, but it's a black line, yeah, and it's parallel, and then you go back down. It's a game of kind of up, adjust, back down, up, adjust, back down. You can't just kind of set your plane up and then go back to planing your piece of wood. You could have set this up so badly wrong that it's really skewed and you're just gonna dig right into your wood. You've got to be able to test it on something that is not important, yeah? And I'll do that kind of now. So I've got it half set up, but I can see that it's not really gonna work, but you will get to <laughs> see that it's not gonna work. Okay, so now we're on to, you, you don't have to have a vise, but it's very important, I guess. To, a vise is very important. You need to clamp your piece of wood on its edge, like so. This is just a test piece of wood. This is just a bit of American cherry that we won't go through grain direction, timber te not technology, kind of stuff like that, but it's a piece of wood in the vise that is not your piece of wood. It's just as in like it's not important to you, but it is for this, this sequence, I guess. So 
how you're going to kind of hold your plane now. You're going to hold it so that this is the front here. You have to distribute kind of pressure. So you can't just have 50-50 as in pushing down because otherwise you're going to do this. And then at the front, it should be kind of 80% pressure at the front here to keep it nice and flat. So not much pressure at the back. Think hands wise, like you can have your, I can have all of my fingers all the way around. Sometimes you have to have your finger out. It depends on what plane you have and how comfortable it is for you. So for me, I have my hand all the way around. So it's 80% at the front. Yeah. And then you kind of lift it off as it comes to the kind of back. Because if you have, it's like 80 front, 50, 50 back front. And then it's kind of 80% at the back and then barely anything as you kind of lift the thing off. Because if you have too much pressure at the front, it just tips over like that. So it's one thing to kind of bear in mind. And I'm just trying to go down, the plane's going down at the middle and you can hear it. Let me just back it off a little bit because it's going to take a shaving out the side. So you want to have kind of nothing to start with. Yeah, move this around. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, so zero is what I kind of call it. That's what I mean by nothing. No shaving coming out at all. Don't get carried away and kind of romantic about, oh yeah, I'm getting a shaving now, this is great, and then start planing. It's not what this exercise is about. So, so nothing, and then you kind of, as you're moving forward, use your finger here to adjust the dial on this one. On most planes, it is clockwise. So when you're standing like this, adjust it kind of clockwise. There's also something called free play. Free play is where this wheel moves, yeah, and nothing happens. Yeah, can you can see there's kind of this free play there. That's just because there's little bits of movement between the thread, the this, the little thing that moves the blade. So don't think just because you're moving this, if there's no tension in this, you're not actually doing anything. So once you feel you push it clockwise, it starts to get a bit tighter. That's when you're actually engaging it down and pushing it kind of forward. And the same goes for when it goes backwards, when you need to get the shaving, when you need to reduce the shaving, well then just turn the dial anti-clockwise, you'll feel this free play, keep going, keep going, and then you feel resistance, and then you need to go like a little bit more than that. So just understand that, I guess. It's kind of like, well, it's important that you understand that. So let's go to forward, and I'm gonna use my, as I'm moving forward, yeah, I'm going forward and adjusting it at the same time. What you don't want to do is take it off, move it forward loads. Oh, it's in there. Take it back loads. You want to be able to kind of dial it in very controlled and very slowly. You don't want to be dig, oh, nothing, dig, nothing. You need to be able to see it as it goes forward. Yeah, or feel it and hear it. So I'm going over to the other side a little bit. Just moving it very slightly. There we go. So now you can hear that. Yeah, it's got that corner. And also the other corner. Yeah, so that's bad news for this blade. As I thought it might be. But this is kind of the reality. Things like this happen. I need to inv I'll investigate a little bit further why, what's kind of bending this out of shape. Is it the frog that's kind of bent? Is it something else that's kind of going on? I need to investigate a little bit further and I'll have another kind of video after this. But you see what's kind of happening. Once I do, a sh if I do the shaving the middle, nothing, look, nothing. It's not this piece of wood. This piece of wood isn't cupped up like that. It wouldn't work that way. Yeah, it's not a very wide bit. So. Yeah, shaving, shaving. Yeah, there's two shavings coming out of there and there. Garbage, this is no good, you know what I mean? You can't use a plane that's like this. This is not going to work, yeah? So that'll be part two of this sequence. So we'll get this kind of sorted and I'll explain and I'll get the other one kind of set up. So for now, clearly no good. Need further investigating, yeah? Which I will do and let you know. Let's move on to the smoothing planes, but these are low angle smoothing planes. So these are my kind of um, favorite planes, let's say. Jack planes, I do like them. They have a, a place, but not as much as the smoothing planes for me anyway. And currently kind of um, with the world climate and whatever it is, you just can't get, this is the Lee Nielsen 164. This is, you know, one of my favorite planes. I love this plane. It's very small, compact, and 
being a low angle is better at tricky grains than a standard kind of jack plane is. So I do like this one, but it's not readily available in the UK anyway. In the States it is. Um, and then over, I mean, it's an, it's a, that's an American make. This is a, I think it's a Canadian that's, a, yeah, made in Canada. That This is a low angle as well. So they're basically the same planes, but this one is available. So this one is more readily available. And this one, the, the main differences are that this has more adjustability. This one has less adjustability, but I'll go through that. So with this one, let's just set up this one kind of first. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through it. I'll go through it quickly. This one is, it has no chip breaker. This one is called bevel up. So when you set this in your plane, the bevel is poking upwards. On a jack plane like this, it is around like so. And that's why you need the chip breaker at the top of it. Yeah. So this one is bevel up and it has to have this little plate on it here because it still needs to engage in this guy. So this is the kind of component that goes on the top. That's what moves the blade forwards and backwards. And then that's the tooth that kind of engages in there. Clearly, because if you sharpen this loads, well, this moves around. The Veritas is very slightly different. So set this one up. Same thing, I have sharpened this, but it might not be amazingly sharp, but let's just put it in anyway. Let's get that in there. All right, again, always looking at the tip of the blade, dropping it in. This one, you don't need to take the screw out. It just kind of goes slots through like so. The, say that, well, there's other like subtle differences, but one of the things you must remember with these low angle kind of smoothing planes or a jack plane, any low angle plane like this, that do not go crazy with the pressure, the tension that you tighten these screws up, because what will happen is that you can, if you push hard on that, it will bend the kind of the underside. It will deflect this bit here. So don't go really, really tight. You should go to kind of medium tightness. You know what I mean? Similar to this, but this one doesn't really impact the bottom of the plane. This one does. So you should go to it. You'll get used to it. Kind of like how much go right. I would have just a pinch kind of there you don't want to really crank on it well you'll realize that because you'll barely be able to move the dials as well so what's annoying about this these kind of this plane in particular not necessarily this one is the side to side adjustability it really does my head in and i'll discuss my this is my plane and it doesn't have that this one annoy i love this plane but it's annoying because you have to hit the blade from side to side to move it to to move it left and right. There's no adjustability here. There's adjustability forwards and backwards, no lateral movement at all, which is kind of annoying, but you get used to it. I'm used to wooden planes, so I'm used to adjusting things. So this one here, you need to adjust it. Let's see, these lines are doing my head in. Let's see, right, so I'm, I, again, I'm doing the same thing. I know which way I'm kind of moving it. It's still kind of clockwise to move it out. And then I can see that there is a shadow this side. So I need to tap it as I'm looking at it. It's not, you get used to it. I'm not saying it's kind of, but I have experience of this. If you're inexperienced, then I would find that a bit annoying where you spend, you know, 300 pounds almost, $300, whatever it is on this plane. And then the way you have to adjust it is to hit it with a hammer. And then when the blade becomes too short, well, you can't hit it with a hammer anymore. You try and get inside there with a screwdriver. Well, that's not very accurate. And I've tried that and it's really, really hard. I mean, trying to teach students to do that. They're like, what? I just spent 300 pounds on this. I'm getting a screwdriver to adjust it. Yeah, doesn't sit well with me, sadly, but, but it works all the same. So knock that and then adjust it back a tiny bit. Just want a little bit tighter, just a tad. Let's see, maybe a tiny bit that side. But sometimes hammers are quite good because you can just do a tiniest little touch. It's a kind of measurable amount of energy that you kind of put into it. With these adjustments, with this one here, if you do need to adjust it left to right, it's about when I, again, teaching the students, I say, move it a bit. Well, how much is a bit? Your a bit and someone else's bit might be slightly different. When it's, a, and again, when you're hitting it with a hammer, 
Well, you can, it's a bit more measurable. Let's give it a teeny little tap and you can see what's kind of happening. With my plane, it's different, but I'll, again, I'll go through that kind of last. So, and I'll have a completely separate video on that one as well. Um, okay, so let's test this one out. And then sometimes where important thing to do, it's called kind of recalibrating this. If you've hacked around with this loads, which I have with that one, that I need to kind of freshen this up. I need to recalibrate it. How I want to do that, I'm going to push this blade. And this one isn't very sharp. Right, so I'm going to get a shaving from the whole thing. And also we've been using this for a marking gauge kind of demonstration. So I've got a nice groove in the middle. That's why it come the shaving kind of splits in two. Right. Let me just get this so it's nice and flat. I'll do a couple of shavings in the middle. All right, it is not that sharp. But again, it'd be good demonstration. Then I'll see if the students is sharp. Okay, so now I've kind of recalibrated it. I'm going to back it off to zero again. So both of them are exactly the same. Back to zero. Other, other things you can do is um, if this starts any planing this goes for, pretty much, if this gets not, it's sticky on here, get a bit of candle wax and just rub a bit of candle wax on here. It really helps with things glide, but don't put kind of candle wax on this if it's, um, if it's going to be a glued surface. Right, so... Let's kind of get this one back to kind of zero, like I said, back to kind of zero again, and then just pushing that forward. So it's just, what I'm looking at here is quite hard, again, hard for you guys to see, because you can't see through my eyes, that I'll show you in the other camera that I'm gonna test it kind of here, and then that side, and then the middle, and I'm getting a build up on this kind of right hand side kind of here. Well, clearly it's not set up correctly. I'm going to have to push it over that way a little bit. Yeah, so again, this is more of a judgment thing. Just give it a tiny tap, cause and effect. I'll hit it, I'm going to check it, yeah? So hit it. Yeah, still a tiny bit, still there. Tiny bit more. Sometimes you end them to move it forward a little bit. Tiny bit more. There we go. So I can tell that, and also by looking at this, let me just blow all the dust off and I'll back it off a tiny bit. And this is one of the tests I always do with the students kind of here that and anyone should be able to do by themselves to tell whether your plane is dull because I know this blade is flat and I know the plane is completely flat on the underside so I know there's no problems there unlike this one I can't guarantee that just yet but I know this is all sorted so the only thing that is off here is the blade is dull and I will show you what happens when it is because if you go if you have watched my previous video when I talked about the erosion of a blade. Let's see if I can get this to work. Let's go a bit more. So yeah, the erosion of the plane, the blade, it kind of domes over at the end, but also the life cycle of a blade, it kind of, it wears out in the middle first. It always tends to wear out in the middle first and then it stops working and then it starts, you get shavings at the end. And then clearly, if you're trying to get this flat, well, you can't get this flat as in flat in this direction if you're getting a shaving out the two sides. You're going to dome this over. So you then have to, because I have seen many, many students, of course, you not say ruin stuff, but I've seen them go, oh, I can't get this flat. I'm trying to join this together. And then I'm like, give us your plane. A couple of seconds, you need to sharpen. Yeah, it's quite easy to tell with this test. Right, so move this forward. Right, oh, too much. Also, when it's, when it's dull, you can barely get a shaving out of it. Right, I can hear it there. That's when it's quiet. A little bit more.
No, let's see. Tiny bit more. <sighs> also, the difference between, another difference between jack plane, this low angle smoothing plane, is the amount of travel you have to spin this is like a lot more of a revolution here to make it move forward. Whereas that one, it's not bad. These ones, this is called like a, di I call this like a direct thread. This one, you barely move this forward because it's the way that the mechanics kind of work of it. I won't go into it, but this has got more pivot points that it's not, because if I move this kind of, you know, three millimeters, this blade isn't moving more with three millimeters. That one there, it's clearly not moving that three millimeters. It's like just a, a teeny bit moves the blade quite a bit, you know what I mean? Whereas this one, you can move this quite, so you have a lot more control with this. So that's why I prefer this one over that one, but this one has side to side adjustment. This one doesn't. Okay, so, okay, here we go. There we go. So, right, if I play now with the other camera, you can kind of see shaving coming out of there. There's not much, it's dull over this side. Yeah, it's kind of picking up a little bit on that side, but I can know it's not bad, but also you can kind of hear, hear it as well. It's like, for me, it doesn't sound, doesn't sound that nice. I can hear it. Yeah, that's scraping. Why it's like, there's a difference between like here, there, and then, so that's, that's without the blade going on it, nice and smooth, you can hear it. Now listen, yeah, it's kind of, it's rough because it's, you know where I talked about that kind of domed bit? It's because it's riding on that domed bit, essentially. That's what happens when it comes dull and dull and dull. It's riding on that kind of polished bit of the blade. That's what happens. And then what happens is you go, oh, well, it's not planing. I'll just keep pushing it forward and it's not working. And then eventually you will get a shaving yeah, but it'll be kind of more plowing it out and it could tear your grain out and it's gonna, I mean, you'll feel it. It's quite a rough finish as well when it's kind of, when it's a bit dull, yeah? So that one is a disassemble, sharpen and set up again, yeah? Again, I'm not gonna do that in a separate video, but that's what will happen to that one. This one, I'm not gonna disassemble kind of this one or shall I? No, I will, why not? Just so I, you can understand where the kind of pins are. What is, Alistair done to this. This is a student's plane, and they should not have that screw tight. It's that that makes it tight. And that should be tighter. So, with the Veritas, I do like the, the blades. This isn't, yeah, this is a PMV11. It's their kind of, um, Comp uh, their, what do you call it? I can't remember the name of the word now anyway, but it's their, their invention. They've invented this kind of uh, manufacturing way of making this blade and how hard it is, what have you. It is very, very hard, but it keeps its edge. So main difference between, you know, this one, that one, that this has got holes in it. There's no separate piece of metal here that you've got all these kind of components in here that you move, you spin this, if you can see in the other camera, you spin this and it adjusts that bit. So it's quite a cool adjustment. And then this one kind of spins from kind of there to there. But like I said, because it's, I call it a direct thread and the thread's not particularly coarse, but it could be finer, that you'd have more adjustment here. So again, there's pros and cons to kind of both of these planes that, and also I will see whether, yeah, it feels pretty good. <sighs> again, watch your kind of tip of your blade. So you're not bashing it into any metal parts and then it wants to slot into the little hole. So you spin this back, yeah, until that kind of falls in. This one here, again, what I would change on this one is potentially kind of this thread screw shouldn't be like rattling around like that. I would potentially put some Loctite. Once you've got it into position, get some Loctite on there to keep it stiff essentially, because it's this that's spinning that should go, it should go kind of underneath that screw. The screw should not be tight or bottomed out. It should be a bit looser than that. Yeah, because this should just slot in and then this is what gives it the correct amount of tension. Same applies for this, don't over tighten this one. Yeah, there we go, medium tightness. 
spin it around. Let's get that out of the way. All right, same thing. Adjust it up. Look for your shadow. It looks pretty good. Go back down again. And I haven't adjusted that one. It's just fallen in. It's very, very close. It doesn't look like I need to move it, but I can't tell until I have tested the shaving. So let's have a look. It should already get, no, not quite. It's getting a little bit in the middle. And by chance, it looks like it's already set up. Yeah, and that's just luck really, but sometimes it happens. So again, this one, it's just when you are adjusting it, it's the tiniest bit. Can be a bit annoying. Yeah, this one is conveniently set up kind of correctly. What I'm looking for, don't get kind of go, wow, yeah, I'm getting shavings, it's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. You're not, this exercise, you're not looking for shavings. Please remember that, it's very important. Or write some of the sequences down, obviously, because it's quite a long video, or watch it in the sequences. So the, this exercise, you're looking for dusty shavings, kind of like this, what's happening kind of here. I'll zoom in on this camera. So this is where I'm getting it from, and I'll do a couple of different like goes at it so you can really understand this is what I'm looking for, or what you should be looking for. <laughs> Clean that out, get it back to zero, nothing in here. Now, and I've already kind of zeroed this out a little bit because it's been done previously. Now get your plane and then go over to one side, try and do a shaving with this like so. You know what I mean? I'm just demonstrating that because it's hard for you to see, like so. So your plane is over to the side. Go one here, and then go over to the far side. Yeah, push down, and then do another one in the middle. And then, look, that's where it's building up. Let's see if I can get it even finer than that, where it's really, really dust. Okay, so I'm gonna go backwards a little bit. Then forwards, see if it's getting, yeah, that's just a tiny bit now. So side, side, middle. And you can hear it, I don't know if the microphone's picking it up there, that's, that's what it sounds like without the blade. Yeah, you can just hear it. It could be a little bit sharper, but that comes with experience of listening to it and knowing what's happening. So look how many times I'm doing like one, two, three, four, and look at the build-up of stuff. Like it's, it's absolutely kind of tiny, the amount in there. They're like, it's dust that you're kind of taking off. That tells me two things. That first off, that it's sharp. If you can get dust like that, that can't get dust because it's got that domed end on it. It has to go low enough to plow a shaving off. You can get a shaving, you can't get dust. It's not sharp enough. And the second thing it tells me is that the blade is correct. It's set in the correct angle. As in like, it doesn't, it's not skewed over this way, it's not skewed over that way. So if I was trying to get this to 90 degrees with a square that I need to plane down the middle. If this was a massive shaving coming out the side, every shaving I took, this plate would be, that this bit of wood would be going do, 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 and over like that. Yeah, so you don't want to battle with that at all. You want this to be in the correct setting, essentially. That's what, you're, that's what you're looking for. That's the kind of the ultimate test is to grab a piece of wood, do it on the side, do it on the other side, and then come back to the middle. Yeah, you can, I can hear it. And then you just go, okay, there's tiny bits. Of, that's not what you're going to then go forward and then plane your piece of wood. It just means now you can adjust this forward and it's going to be better. So look, I can now adjust this kind of forward a tiny bit. Yeah, and you'll be getting, you know, obviously that's a very, very fine shaving, tiny bit more. You might go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, but now I know that this is in the middle, so this is not uh, what you want at this stage, yeah. Let's move on to my plane and why I have kind of designed it in this kind of way, because I have seen the pitfalls of this and this, pitfalls of both of these, this one in particular, it rusts. 
Yeah, it rusts because it's cast steel. So is this one. They both kind of rust. This one is stainless steel, so it's not going to rust, not unless you put in a vat of acid or something kind of like that. It's not going to rust on a general kind of use. So that's a pro. Uh, the, the only con about it is the price, of course. It's going to be very expensive, but I'm not trying to compete with these guys. I just could see kind of areas for improvement, of course. So what I've done with this one is that of course, it's all stainless steel, but the main thing, I'm not going to go into it a huge amount, but the main difference with this, it's still got the adjustability of that one because I love that adjustability. So you still kind of adjust the blade like so. Yeah, so that's how you get the kind of shaving. You adjust this. I get this one to work. All right, it's off to that side. Yeah, so there's a little bit that side. But now you think, so this one, you have to you have to kind of push this this one you push that in that direction like i said how much do you push it a little bit not very measurable this one you hit it with a hammer oh better it measurable but still how can i tell someone else with this one it is like veritas have grub screws at the front but that is a grub screw this side and a grub screw that side if you adjust it this side you adjust the grub screw. Yes, it does push the blade, but you have to then come around the other side to loosen off that grub screw. And if you do backwards and forwards, well, it's a pain because you have to go both sides of the plane. With my one, that there is a screw here and a screw on the other side, and then there's a, a mechanism inside here. So if I want to adjust that, and I've kind of laser print on the side, just in case people get, because I can feel like, which way do I move it? Okay, I need to turn it, this direction to move the blade that direction so i put this little tool and i made this special tool so and this one because when you turn something then it is a measurable amount because you can you can physically see it you go like that and go okay well i'm going to move this by a couple of millimeters and then i'm going to kind of try it again yeah i'm going okay i need to turn it a little bit more yeah, actually, it was the free play there, just a little bit more. Yeah, I'm not going to go through all of it because, again, it's going to take a while to see. Let's move this forward. I'll do a tiny bit more. Again, I don't make this video kind of too long because I'll have this kind of another, another setup. Let's see. Yeah, it needs more. I didn't actually set it up. I don't know why. It's because I didn't, originally, I didn't set it up like this. So, and again, another advantage of this one, let's push the blade out. And actually, I need to adjust that guy because I haven't used this for a while. It's not quite set up correctly. But the advantage of this one is well, because I'm right-handed. Well, I'm holding this in my right hand and I adjust this from my right hand, yeah? But it still has the same adjustability from the other side. You can spin it this way or that way to move the blade left or right. So it's kind of right or left-handed. So I can easily adjust it from clearly this side. I can adjust it forwards or back, you know what I mean? Left or right. Yeah, I do not have, it's not a grub screw that's adjusting it. It's a screw and a thread and a carriage that kind of gets pulled as you turn this and then it gets pushed as you turn this as well. Again, I wish more companies would have something like this. I'm not patenting this or anything like that. So I wish people would use it because it's gonna make everyone's experience of planing a hell of a lot easier. Like this isn't gonna, I basically, I've run out of thread here, so I'm gonna to have to readjust. It's kind of like that one. I need to readjust this plate essentially to make this work. But to get the kind of video going, I'm not going to adjust that. But again, I will show you guys in another video, because I know this blade is lovely and sharp because I sharpened it fairly recently, but like I said, I've kind of run out of room on, um, on that, so I can't adjust it any lower. I can, but I need to move the plate, essentially. Um, right, well, that's that. Again, if you're interested in more videos, specific videos on different planes, then kind of let me know. I definitely will be doing one on my plane. Go and check that out. I mean, I haven't done it yet, but if you're watching this and it's a bit old, well, I will have done. Um, yeah, please um, 
keep watching this series. The next one is going to be, I'm going to sort that one out. So I might do one more video just to explain what happened with that and how I sorted that out. After that, it's going to be the breadboard. I'm going to, um, ham I mean, I'm probably going to use the bandsaw to cut some of the, to cut it to length and so on and so forth. I'm going to hand plane the top and bottom thickness that essentially. So I'm going to go through the hand planing as an exercise, bit of timber technology, kind of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, please subscribe, uh, like the video, write a comment and share with your friends as well. Any kind of woodworking friends that you think this might be kind of helpful, this kind of setup, then please, yeah, share it with them, I guess. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys.